What's going on guys, it's your boy Laquan here and I just wanted to share a story with you and it's not only just a story time that we're going to be having today because you guys have been asking for another one for a long time but it's kind of an advice column sort of deal and we've talked about bullying in the past before and how I've dealt with it in, in a very joking way but I also want to talk to you guys today about two specific examples from my middle school years that really set the tone for me going into my high school career now. You guys know that I, uh, I'm a chubby man. I was always bigger than the other kids uh, in elementary school and middle school. And I'm not just talking about outward either. Like I'm talking height wise. I was always on par of being one of the taller kids until about ninth grade. And then every, every one of those bastards shout out to like six, six. I'm six foot, by the way. I just want you guys to know that. So I'm not like four, uh, five foot four, but uh, if you are, that's okay too. My brother's five seven, and I still think of him as a bigger man than me every time I think of my older brother. But one specific incident, this was in eighth grade, and I was always the kid that, like, I just wanted to have fun, man. I wanted to make you laugh, whether you were the top of the, the totem pole or the bottom. I wanted to be somebody that was getting laughs from everyone. That meant more to me than, you know, pretending to be some popular asshole that, like, um, you know, gets off on, on making kids feel bad about themselves, right? But there was this kid, it must have been new, it was seventh grader when I was in eighth grade riding the bus. I'm now on this bus specifically, my bus driver... We had a park. She would let us off at this park to fight. So if we were going to get into it, that was the place that we were going to make it happen because she wasn't having it on her bus. That's not how they do it nowadays because, you know, the world we live in, everybody's afraid of everybody and nobody wants to admit that sometimes it's okay to, to fight back a little bit. But uh, this kid, he decided, hey, you know, I'm going to pick on Jordan Payton today. And I thought to myself, you've made a mistake. Not only am I larger than you, but I'm also not somebody that takes shit all right, I may make a lot of jokes, maybe the funny, humorous guy, but that doesn't mean that I'm an idiot. I'm actually what I would consider myself to be fairly intelligent in terms of understanding how people work and how to play them, especially mentally. So this kid, I called his bluff. He was making fun of me. I don't know if he was calling me fat or whatever, which was like, that's so old, man. Like, we get it. I have man tits. It's fine. I stood up and, and I went off on this kid. Like, I went ballistic. You know, I literally was like, I was like, you want to you wanna fucking do this? Let's get off the damn bus. I will kill you in front of everybody. I will kill you. Literally, everybody was like, yo, I think Jordan Payton might, might be a psychopath. And he sat down. He's like, I'm just playing, bro. I was just playing. It's cool. It's cool. I continued screaming. I got off that bus, and I was screaming at him to get off. I was yelling at him to come down those stairs and come get me, and he left me alone. And you're probably thinking, well, that could have went you know, the other way. What if he's bigger than you? What if you're not the bigger person? Well, here's the thing. If you don't confront them then and call their bluff... A lot of the times they're never going to stop because I feel like most people aren't ready for immediacy. They're not ready for you to respond. If you ask anybody that's ever dealt with any sort of, uh, you know, trauma or or been in a, in a lot of fights or been in some sort of, um, you know, combat scenario or somebody's broken into somebody's house, it's like you you react you have to react harder and faster than the person that's that's committing and and that's why I've always committed is just going right back in whenever that opportunity is you know, permitted itself, allowed itself to exist for me. And the second time was in eighth grade. And this was in my home ec class, right? My facts class, family and consumer sciences. First of all, that teacher hated me. She ended up quitting the next year. We had to work on these damn like duffel bags, like the zip, not the zip string bags, but the, the pull string, the drawstring bags. And, um, she was like, yeah, we're going to make them. And, and I was so bad at sewing that she made me come in in the mornings like an hour or two before school started. And finally, she got so mad because I just couldn't get it done. And I kept coming in in the morning that she took the bag for me and ran it through and finished it and then threw it at me and said, you get a fucking A. This lady, I'm not even kidding you, chat. She was like the nicest, sweetest old lady on the planet. I apparently pushed her to the edge. All my friends are dead. So what happens next? What ends up going on after this is... We are sitting there in class and this kid, this kid, all right, we're going to call him, we're going to call him Bobby. This kid comes up behind me and he starts pinching the nerves on my shoulder blades. Like literally, like wherever the nerves are, like in my neck, in between my shoulders, he's pinching them and he's doing it. He's laughing. All of his friends are laughing. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, Bobby, you know that I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand for this shit. And I stood up and I said, you want to play around, kid? Let's do it right now. Let's do what you want to do right now. And he said, after school, I said, nah, put your fucking hands up. Let's do this right now, man. Right here in the middle of the class. I'll get expelled for this. I'll go to another school. I'm going to graduate on time just like everybody else, son. Let's go. Throw your hands up. Let's do it right here in the room. And he sat down. And he said, nah, after school. And I screamed it at him again. I kept screaming it at him again. And the teacher, she was looking at me and looked at him. And she saw what he was doing to me earlier. And she just turned her head and didn't say anything. And I said, that's right. That's right. You sit down. You're afraid of me. From then on out, everybody got wind that I was a little crazy, and they left me the hell alone. Now, I want to tell you a story 
from my older brother that gets me every time, ladies and gentlemen. And this is one of my favorite stories that he's literally ever told me. And that was when he stood up for a kid. They were picking on him. And this was when he was in high school, like a 10th grader. My brother was a rugby player. Uh, very athletic, very good rugby player in high school. And, uh, you know, he was like, hey, guys, leave him alone. And there were other rugby players picking on this kid. And the kid goes, I don't need your fucking help. And he spit in my brother and it landed in his mouth. And my brother... <laughs> My brother picked that kid up, literally turned him over and put his, put his head head first into the trash can and proceeded to just hit him in the stomach. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been hit in the stomach, but when you're in a fight, if somebody knocks the wind at you and hits you in the stomach, it's almost demo, like debilitating. Like somebody hits you in the balls. It's, it's very similar to the same way. You can't breathe. You can't move. And it's like, all he had to do was accept his help and it would have been all good. And then he spit on him and then tried to start a fight. And my brother ended up beating the shit out of this kid. The best part is the teacher was like, I saw what happened. That's that kid's fault, not your fault. So moral of the story is you meet fire with fire. Occasionally it's good. If you're better off to avoid confrontation because a lot of the times it won't work out in your favor. But I just wanted to tell you guys a couple of the stories that I have specifically that I thought were funny to share with you, including my brothers. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, guys. It's going to be a lit weekend. Make sure you're following my Twitch. Monday, Tuesday specifically, you're going to want to be following the shit out of it because i got a lot of cool stuff. I'm going to E3 with Xbox. It's going to be a tight weekend. Super blessed. Appreciate you guys watching the video, and I will catch you guys tomorrow for another upload.